So Justin, a lot of people probably recognize you from The Amazing Race. I'm just wondering what made you decide you want to jump into politics? I've never been a career politician. I've never done this before in my life. But after the election in 2016, I just felt like I needed to do something. Mm -hmm. Something more than just talk about it. I have a two-year-old daughter at home. I'm a husband, a father, a union member. And I just felt like we needed more people in government who were going to stand up and fight for people. So I went looking to go help whoever was going to run against Marshall Blackburn, who had been in that seat for 16 years, and it really felt like it stopped listening to the people. That person didn't exist, so I became that person. It's really that simple. So I jumped in a little over a year ago. I've raised almost $260,000 in grassroots donations, I'm not taking any PAC money or special interest money. And the reason is because I really believe that the real dividing line in this country is between special interests and the people. And I think they've had a hammer lock on our government for way too long. And we need people who are going to run for the right reasons to stand up and side with people. The fact that you're not taking any money from tax or special interests has really kind of boosted your image here because a lot of politicians around here do do that. So. It's also no secret that this district is traditionally very Republican. Uh, just wondering, what do you think your message is that will help you win here? You're absolutely right. This is a very Republican area, traditionally conservative area and I'm under no illusions about how easy this is going to be. But I also think that there's a hunger on both sides of the aisle. We've seen that with the message that Phil Bredesen is putting out in his campaign about working together, getting past the hyper-partisanship and extremism. And that's really what I've tried to say from the beginning. So I know people are going to have a hard time with that D next to my name. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I really hope that we can focus on the things that we have in common rather than the things that we have different. And I think that I'm the one in this race that's trying to reach out talk to the people who don't agree with me about every single thing. I'm running against a guy named Mark Green. He's not talking about reaching out to Democrats. He's not talking about reaching out to people that don't agree with him. He's just drawing the line deeper between us. And I don't think that's what people around here want. So even though it's a conservative area, it both, Williamson County especially voted for Rubio in the primary. He's a pretty moderate guy. And I think I'm hopeful that moderate Republicans will take a look at people like Mark Green and realize that he's not the kind of Republican that they are, that John McCain had a problem with him for a reason. He was too extreme for the Trump administration. He was a supporter of Roy Moore down in Alabama. And so even though I have a D next to my name, at the end of the day, I think I have more in common with a lot of those Republicans that you're talking about than he does. And, and the challenge for the next three months after the primary is gonna be to get our message out there, reach out. I've already hired a Republican. She's never worked for a Democrat before because I'm trying to put my money where my mouth is and I think I really want her voice in the mix in our campaign. And so I'm trying to be very clear that I do value the opinion of Republicans and I want them to see themselves in this race too. If you do go to Congress, how will you take that with the Trump or support, I mean, proposing for a policy? How would you look at that from that lens? I would look at the policy. You know, I, I support Medicaid expansion in our state, which is a state issue, but it was a plan backed by our Republican governor has one, ensure Tennessee. You know, it doesn't matter whose plan it is. If it's a good plan that will help people, I'll be for it. And that same plan that I'm talking about is a plan that Mark Green helped to block in our state, which kept $23 billion out of our state, $5 billion in common. It really, really hurt a lot of the rural communities that are part of our district. I was just in McNary County not long ago where their hospital closed. So that was Mark Green putting politics over people, and that's not what I plan to do. I plan to reach out. I plan to be for something that could help people, and I don't care whose idea it is. And I don't care what letter's next to your name. If that's your attitude going into this, I'm, I'm listening, and I'm willing to support that person. So you mentioned Phil Bredesen. Do you see any parallels between your two campaigns? I would like to think there are a lot of comparisons between Bredesen and I. Bredesen's a bridge builder. He's the adult in the room. He's the one reaching across the aisle and letting Republicans know that if it helps people, he's going to be for it. That's the message that I've been carrying with me ever since we got into this thing over a year ago. We're trying to get past the hyperpartisan, past par hyperpartisanship, past the extremism. We're really trying to bring people together, and that's just not what Mark Green's selling, and that's not what Marsha Blackburn's selling. So I'm definitely trying to follow Phil's lead on a lot of things. We're not the same person, but he's making people more comfortable with that D next to my name, and I thank him for that. And so we're definitely going to follow his lead. Do you see any like specific issues that can help bridge the divide between Republicans and Democrats? I think there's a lot of things that we have more in common about than we realize. I bring up campaign finance reform. Trump ran on a drain the swamp message. I think that's something both sides of the aisle want to see. We want people who aren't going to be beholden to special interests. I think we both, we, most people want equal rights for everybody in this country. Most people want health care for everybody in this country. Most people want better wages for workers in this country. I think most Americans agree on a lot of this stuff. And so it's finding out where our common ground is. We may disagree on how we get there, 
But if we drill down on what we all want, I think we have more in common than we realize. And I think a lot of these issues should not be partisan issues. You know, as we approach the primaries coming up in about a month, what's the message you want people to really get from your campaign? The message I hope people take from my campaign is that I'm in it for the right reasons. I'm just a husband. I'm, an, I'm a father. I'm trying to fight for people. I'm not taking PAC money or special interest money. I'm not going to take that campaign money that's just going to get me reelected to give, give favors in exchange for it. I think that legalized bribery has been a problem in our country. I think most of the issues, why we can't get things done, comes back to that. So I hope that they realize that I'm somebody who's, gonna willing, who's willing to put in the work. I've been traveling this district for over a year. I've gone to all 19 counties multiple times. And I know that at the end of this, in November, the work will have only just begun. So I hope they see me as somebody who's willing to tell it like it is, who's a fighter, who's a hard worker, and who's in it for the right reason. And the other thing that I want people to know about this campaign is that I'm somebody who's not afraid to take a politically unsavvy position if it's the right thing to do. So a couple of things that we've already done, we marched with the students in the March for Our Lives in Nashville when I was told that wasn't the politically right thing to do. I marched for the, no, stop, I marched for the Stop Separating Families March in Nashville, which was another thing that people told me was maybe the wrong thing to do politically. So I'm not thinking about what the right thing to do is politically, I'm thinking about what the right thing to do is from a human perspective. That's why we're not taking any NRA money, we're not taking the fossil fuel money. It's not because I'm not willing to talk to people, I'm willing to talk, my, my family members are NRA members, I'm not against the Second Amendment, but I just don't want the voices of special interests to be louder in my ear than the voices of you or of people in our district. So that's something that's really important to me and I hope when people are casting their vote in the primary and in the general election, they're voting for people who are willing to stand up for what's right. Awesome. Thank you so much for stopping by at this session. Thank you. I appreciate it. Remember to get out and vote, you guys. Early voting is going on for the primary until July 28th, and the primary elections are on August 2nd. Then we have the general election on November 6th. Tennessee is ranked dead last in the nation for voter turnout, so make sure you guys get out there and vote. So I appreciate you guys having me to do some canoeing with Canoe and helping me milk this pun for all I possibly can. And just remember, it's not about how you voted in the past, it's about our future right now.